Hey everyone, for today's video, I'll be talking about Hazuki and making a sword showcase after trying her out for a little. I'll go through and give my thoughts and such. Starting with her slots, she has a 6 star physical, 5 star physical, and 4 star support and defense. The double physical slots allow her to hold a wide variety of damage buffing and debuffing equips, which is nice to increase both hers and others damage output. Her support slot is also fairly helpful as it can change to what's needed. LB6 isn't the best, although that LB7 defense slot will certainly make Hazuki much better in the endgame. As of now, I would suggest holding off of using expert LBs on her, although feel free to use dupes of her to limit break herself. For her skill, it reduces the enemy's damage resist by 20% for 10 seconds with 12 seconds CT. It's really nice for that extra bit of damage, and the long active duration makes others benefit from it quite often. For her arts, she stacks the team's physical damage by 30% per art up to 150%. This was definitely the least fun part of her kit. It takes a little while to stack up which is boring, but after it is fully stacked, the damage from her art makes a very noticeable change for the team. For her true art, she enters third eye for 2 minutes, and then in third eye she gives all allies 130% arts damage and 30% damage resist for 30 seconds. There isn't much to say, the damage buff is actually insane, and the extra bit of damage resist helps the team out a ton in endgame content. My only gripe with this is that it lasts for 2 minutes. I found that in longer content she needs to reset back in the third eye right as the game is nearing the end, which is always risky if you lose her true art damage resist buff. If they made it 3 minutes long or added extra time on her true weapon passive, I think it'd make it a lot less annoying, but that doesn't degrade from the true art's active effect at all. For her super art, she does 120,000 light damage physical, and for 15 seconds, allies get 50% accuracy, and she reduces the enemy's light resist by 100%. While it doesn't have the highest multiplier in the world, I found that this still does a ton of damage regardless considering Kazuki gives herself a ton of damage and attack. And on top of it, the attack has an insane 100% light resist debuff, so this absolutely shreds enemies. We still have to see how the accuracy helps, although I'm sure it'll be very strong in high evasion bosses. For her passives, she gets 100% damage and 5 arts a second and third eye. She enters true third eye if all allies HP is 90% or higher when she uses her true art. And in true third eye, she gets 100% accuracy and attack as well as 100% paralysis resistance. These are all insane passives, she gets passive art gen, damage, attack, and accuracy. My only issue is that having allies at 90% or higher HP may be hard at some times, considering that they need to take next to no damage, and if you even mess it up once, she has to stay in third eye without the passive attack and accuracy up until it's over. This isn't an issue when she's behind a shield, but it is something to watch out for so you're not scammed of your true third eye. For her true weapon, it's a 5 star physical, gives 50% damage, and then 30% damage to all allies for 10 seconds with a 50 second CT. And when it's used by Hazuki, she increases her stats by 20%, and then increases arts by 100 when entering third eye, with 5% skill CT recovery. The active effect is insanely strong, not only for Hazuki, but when she is being ran on Mono Light, since everyone else on the team is able to benefit from the damage too. The passive stats up is nice, and the 100 arts is really strong to get her straight into her true art, right after activating third eye. That way, it lessens her arts gauge that she needs to start up by a little bit. I'd definitely pick it up if you have her. But as for some other equips you'd want to run on her 5 star physical slots, obviously her true weapon. Emperor True Weapon, Valerie True Weapon, or Shepherd of Islid for physical resist debuffing. Velocity isn't terrible for light and physical resist debuffs. Rishali Bikini or Sagiri's Katana for damage resist debuffing. Dotan Bori, Robo, or Bakuzan and Kyoru for damage and arts gauge. Chobi's Axe for damage and debuffing. Reyes True Weapon for damage and attack buffing. Or anything else that could either give her art gen, buff her damage, or debuff the enemies such as light or physical resist debuffing. As for her 4 star support, there's a lot you could do, but the best I found include Fenzaloha for art gen and equip CT, Ilya's dress for art gen and damage resist, Kaon for break, Arc Ignite for arts, or anything really. If you manage to get her LB7, what you want to use depends on the stage and you'd need more specific elemental damage resist items, but for general damage resist, Seagull, Rem's Bikini, or like I said before, anything you'd need in particular, whether it be physical, magic, or elemental resist. For crests, Arts Gauge is good to get her started. Attack up or equip CT isn't terrible either. Pretty open ended for what you can give her. Overall, Hazuki is one of the best supporters in the game. She gives a ton of damage to the team, damage resist, 
debuffing as well as being able to output damage herself. And as we get a lot more attackers, her support for them is going to be very nice. She'll age somewhat good I think since the damage resist is always going to be good for a damage supporter and damager. She is fairly reliant on others for art gen until she stacks but from there she wipes everything out. And with the right support she can go crazy, especially if she's on a mono light team with units like Emperor, Stargaliza, or Light Sestina since she has her true weapon active effect and super art to help them. A quick little thing that I noted as well, once you activate either her super art or true art, I'm not sure about her art, but when you activate them, if she is fainted after using it, despite her being fainted, she'll still attack the enemy. You should be able to see it in the second half of the Celia fight where she's fainted, but she's still able to attack the boss after using her true art. It's definitely really nice for stages that you can nuke that might have a faint in one of the thresholds, such as some of the mine stages. That's everything for the video though. Let me know your thoughts on Hozuki down below or if you happen to pull her. If you did enjoy the video, I'd appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later.